Here we are working with Palo Alto 350 box with two high availability interfaces HA1 and HA2 with the console port and the management interface. We have about 12 interfaces, copper interfaces and 8 fiber interfaces that needs an additional module, the SFP module. Uh, I just logged in to our Windows Server 2016, we should go to administrative tools and then group policy management. Group policy will go to the default domain control policy, right click and edit. We open this page. From here, computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, security settings, and then go to advanced audit policy configuration, audit policies, and account login. As you can see, both of these Kerberos subcategory should be at success. Right click, properties, and configure, it should be on success. By default, these two are not configured. In addition, we should go to log on, log off. These two, audit log off and audit log on, both should be as success. In the same matter, properties, configure and success. And by default, both of them are not configured. Uh, from our best practices and from our experience in Palo Alto, these are the best practices that should be deployed in Windows Server 2016. We tried many configurations, but we have some improper uh, configuration, no exact logs, and we find that these are the best practices. Here we created the Palo Alto user, it is called Palo Alto and is member of administrators, domain admins and domain users. As we said before that it, that it may belong only to domain users but it needs some additional configuration. In this lab we just uh, made it a member of administrator and domain admin too. I logged into Palo Alto, it's HTTPS and the IP address. From the dashboard, we can see here that we are working with version 8. Here it's version 8. The first step is to go to device, server profiles and LDAP. We have initially created our LDAP connection with our two domain controllers or two Windows Server 2016 primary and the secondary. We can add a new one, give it a name, it is test, and add our server, AD Active Directory, and the IP address, for example, it's 1.2. The default port for LDAP is 389. Usually, it is kept the same. Give it our domain. The user created earlier for the integration, it's Palo Alto at test.com and the password. SSL TLS secured connection here in our case it is not needed it, it depends on your case okay we can create it we have a one created and working previously a note just make sure that these two IP addresses are pingable from your management interface to test it we can SSH to our Palo Alto as I am doing here with the needed credentials as you can see I just logged into Palo Alto we can make the needed test by ping host 192.168.10.10 which is our primary domain controller it is pingable Step 2, device authentication profile and we should add a new authentication profile, add a new one, we should, the type should be LDAP and we choose the created one earlier. From advanced allow list here it should be all which means include all the users that will be integrated or that will be copied from our active directory. Step 3, go to device user identification. Here we will configure the WMI probing since no agent will be installed on our Windows server. 
follow us we will need to make some WMI probing to our server to collect logs and gather some information about the users we just edit the user mapping domain and the user we created earlier for this integration server monitoring we enable the security log and enable session keep all intervals as default also we enable client probing the cache time off follow all to by default cache the user to IP mapping for 45 minutes we had a case that we faced unknown users in Palo Alto logs after 45 minutes so when I increase this value to 10 or 12 hours it just solved the issue so my recommendation is to increase this default value this just to do no need to uh, follow the other tabs here's the part for server monitoring this that Palo Alto can check if our server or the status of our servers as you can see here both of them are connected we can add a new one the type should be Microsoft Active Directory give it a name and its IP address next step go to group mapping settings add a new group name group test and here we should select uh, the profile that we created in step one okay everything is kept as default final step is to enable the user identification on the needed zone usually it is our inside zone facing our uh, servers and our uh, users network zones and here it's our inside just a click on the enable user identification checkbox now we can make our policies based on usernames and based on groups as you can see here I just created or I was creating a new policy uh, from the user tab all the users that were created in the active directory are now included in our policies and we can apply URL filtering, threat provisioning and any types of policy you want to configure from the monitor tab traffic we can monitor all users integrated with Palo Alto and we can check all their activities on the network which websites they are uh, accessing or what type of uh, traffic they are using what kind of application only the logs now can be shown on users with active directory integration for advanced troubleshooting we can ssh to our palo alto and use the command show user ip dash user dash mapping all which will show us all the users and their corresponding ip address and here we can see the time out that we configured earlier as we said by default it's 45 minutes and for uh, best practices or better functionality we can increase this time out up to 10 or 12 hours thank you very much for watching and uh, wait us for our next videos thank you very much